Mrs. Bridget Jones is in hospital with pneumonia. The physician has prescribed intravenous antibiotics and a 1,000 milliliter NaCl 0.9% infusion at a flow rate of 80 milliliters per hour. Having completed priming of the infusion tubing, the nurse moves to the user's bedside to install the intravenous infusion. The nurse performs hand hygiene upon entering into the user's room. Hand hygiene is mandatory before any contact with the user to prevent the potential spread of pathogens and infections. Hi. Hi, I'm Rosie Daniels and I'm a nurse. I'm here to set up an infusion for your antibiotic medication. All right. Do you prefer your right or left arm? Well, I'd rather you use the left one since I'm right-handed. Can you tell me your name and date of birth, please? My name is Bridget Jones, and I was born on August 1st, 1970. I'll counter-check on your bracelet. Perfect. The nurse compares the information given with the user's bracelet. She must unequivocally identify the user before setting up the infusion. Asking for the user's full name and date of birth is the best way to identify them. The nurse hangs the solution bag about one meter above the user. Hanging the bag above the user allows the infusion to flow by gravity as pressure from the infusion is higher than vein pressure. The nurse places a pad under the user's arm and the tubing end near the user's arm. The pad under the user's arm protects the bed linen from getting stained when inserting the short infusion catheter. The nurse looks for accessible veins in the user's left forearm. She selects a straight, good size, not knotty, and papable vein that allows for full insertion of the catheter. The selected insertion site should be away from previous sites. Slurosed, hard veins, as well as infiltrated and bruised areas should be avoided. Areas with scars, burns, and branching veins are also prescribed. The nurse positions the garret 12 to 15 centimeters upstream of the insertion site, making sure it is sufficiently tight. Installing the garret too close to the selected vein could cause the vein to burst during the procedure. A properly tightened garret causes the vein to swell, making it easier to see. The nurse palpates the vein by exerting pressure with the fingertips. A feeling of ballooning under the fingertips indicates that the vein is nicely swelled and big enough for the procedure. The nurse removes the garret while she prepares the material. Leaving the garret in place too long can lead to numbness in the user's arm. If necessary, the nurse should shave off the hairs around the insertion site. Using an electric razor or scissors is recommended. The nurse opens the catheter, sterile gauze, and transparent film packages and prepares three chlorohexidine and 70% alcohol swabs. The nurse puts on non-sterile gloves and positions the garret. Wearing gloves protects the nurse against contact with the user's blood and prevents the transmission of pathogens. She disinfects the insertion site with the three chlorohexidine and 70% alcohol swabs. The use of chlorohexidine is strongly recommended for catheters that are meant to stay in place for long periods of time. The disinfecting effect of chlorohexidine extends over time, thus reducing the risk of infection. The three different swabbing directions, along with the friction, dislodges any pathogens from micro-injuries in the user's skin. The nurse waits until the disinfected area is completely dry. This gives time for the antiseptic solution to procure a disinfection effect and prevents a burning sensation when inserting the catheter under the user's skin. The nurse should not blow, 
fan with her hand or sponge off the antiseptic solution as this could contaminate the disinfected area. The nurse stabilizes the vein with the thumb of her non-dominant hand. This allows to secure the vein while perforating the skin and prevents the vein from receding. This also reduces the risk of contamination of the previously disinfected insertion site. She pierces the skin at an angle of 30 degrees, which allows to follow the vein and pierce it without going all the way through. The upward facing bevel makes it easier to insert. As soon as blood appears in the catheter chamber, the nurse lowers the catheter to about 15 degrees and inserts it about 0.5 centimeters into the vein. Lowering the catheter angle reduces the risk of piercing all the way through the vein. While holding the mandarin, the nurse slides the catheter into the vein until the edge comes into contact with the insertion site. The nurse then removes the garret. The nurse exerts pressure upstream of the insertion site to stop blood from flowing out of the catheter. She uses the middle or ring finger of her non-dominant hand to do this and uses the thumb and index of her non-dominant hand to stabilize the catheter. Once the mandarin has been removed, it should be never put back in place as this could cause the vein to rupture, damage the catheter or part of the catheter which could come free and be carried away into the user's bloodstream. This could lead to thrombophlebitis or other bloodstream damage. With her non-dominant hand, the nurse quickly connects the end of the catheter with the tubing without touching the connecting point. She then tightens the safety lock. She removes the compress and cleans up any spilled blood at the insertion site with fluorohexidine and 70% alcohol swabs. This connecting step completes the catheter insertion procedure and ensures the leak tightness of the connection. The nurse starts the infusion by gradually opening the flow rate regulator. Starting the infusion prevents any blood from coagulating inside the catheter. The nurse slowly opens the slide clamp of the infusion tubing. Opening the slide clamp too fast could lead to excess pressure inside the vein and cause it to burst. She applies the tape to the insertion site to protect it from contamination and reduce the risk of accidental dislodgement of the tube and catheter. This provides a window onto the insertion site for quick checks. The nurse removes the non-sterile gloves and disposes of them appropriately. Disposing of the gloves immediately prevents any potential pathogen propagation. She secures the tubing on the user's forearm to reduce the risk of pulling and dislodgement of the tubing. The nurse adjusts the infusion flow rate according to the medical prescription. The infusion flow rate can be adjusted manually from the drip chamber or by using a volumetric pump. She writes the date and time of catheter installation on a piece of tape initials it and sticks it directly on the transparent film. The nurse checks the integrity of the insertion site and for any signs of infection, infiltration, or inflammation. If in doubt or a problem is detected, the nurse immediately removes the catheter and inserts a new catheter at a different insertion site.